Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here at the start of a new video, I guess, technically, with uh, Kaiser Redux, which we're playing everyone's favorite uh, French nation, sometimes, the French Social Republic, and Liberia demands Sierra Leone. Liberia has long desired the state of Sierra Leone, seeing them as a kind of brother nation who founded by uh, certain ind individuals who were forced to do labor, uh, uh, who were sent back to Africa from Canada, Britain, another old Anglo Empire. Now they've issued the French colonial government an ultimatum. Either we turn these rightfully African lands over to them, or there will be war. Finally, let them have it. Over your dead body, which we did rush out two more divisions here, which is why they're not that great. But, uh, we're gonna rush out more divisions here, as we are still, of course, just kind of, like, hanging out here. Um, we're trying to push in just a little bit. We did make an encirclement up here, too. It's just a giant mass. It's taking forever. But, I mean, what else is new? Oh, and there goes up here. Now they've clicked war on us. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I personally, do we actually do okay here? Do we have any planes, actually? We're not really an airbase nearby. Here. Oh. Should have went to this one instead, but whatever. Um, maybe we can do well, maybe we can't. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Too. Come on. Deploy, god dang it. There you go. Now we should do okay. Now there's, they're flooding through there, but whatever. Um, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. So can do, I'm not worried about all this stuff down here. The fall. Oh, the fall of Paris. Okay. So at least I got that. Well, we'll see what the peace deal is like. Because once this is done, we're going to rush down to Liberia. Ooh. Took Leon, which is very good as well. And they have now capitulated, which is good. Um, hopefully we get to get these guys as well. And uh, yeah, hopefully we do all right here. Two divisions is obviously not enough, but you know we're doing the best we can right now. Hopefully they don't take out our air base. Because that would really suck. Um, here, rush this. We need these guys out now. The fall of New Orleans, oh, that's not good for them either. Uh, get them on a if you can. What can you do about that? Come on, come on, come on. Can we actually take them out? Oh my god, we got encircled. Which means I'm going to do some funky stuff here, because I hate this. I hate this so much, so. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in just a little bit. And, of course, these guys are about to capitulate too, which is good. We'll also capitulate the Socialist Republic of Italy. And then we'll kind of see where we're at after that. Uh, but we're subsidizing base production right now. World class navy we can do. We read about this one last time. Um, but yeah, we're out of things to focus is to do until we fully liberate everybody. But a world class navy. Most of the French navy accompanied our government in exile in North Africa. As such, our navy is large, but many of our ships are outdated. In its current state, the navy could defend our shores, but it's uncertain how it would fare if someone were to, attempt to contest our hold on the Western Mediterranean. Let's try for a large scale overhaul. Ministry of the Air. The Ministry of the Air is tasked with both organizing our aeronautical efforts, such as our civilian air transport, and our air forces, which proved to be so useful in the Great War, and according to military thinkers, will prove even more critical in the upcoming war. Uh, as technological progress enables new air tactics and strategy, and we have the liberation. Now, I'd use cons commands here because, even though we fairly took out both the French Commune, as well as the Socialist Republic of Italy, the game was, like, glitched, where I couldn't capitulate them, so I basically had to annex them, which sucks, but... We did get them fairly, I do swear. We got them fairly. Uh, but the liberation. After much bloodshed and turmoil, the Metropole is finally back in our hands. After so much heckish war, we have at, least fr at last freed our brothers and sisters, who lived for all too long under socialist tyranny, and Paris is ours once again. But much turmoil lies ahead. The war devastated France, with our beautiful country now lying in ruins, and far from a sig insignificant part of the population is still misguided enough to sympathize with the socialists. We've won the war, but now it falls also in the peace. Let's set to work. We remove uh, anti communard oh, we get post war devastation, getting a lot of cores, complete the focus on la liberation. And also, I, I literally just annexed parts of uh, Italy here. Now, I was supposed to get this part of it, Austria, but whatever. You know what? To be fair, um, occupied territories, Austria. Oh, I can't return their stuff. Oh, well. Piedmont and Lombardy. Our army is taking control of Lombardy, and the locals are clamoring for self government. We should decide what to be done with the region, as it would be difficult and expected to hold otherwise. Pop it. Uh, uh, Piedmont. Oh, my finger slipped. They also do mobiles, but uh, let's see, where is it? La Liberation. After so many years, long years of pain and struggle in the name of French freedom, we finally return to the mainland, freeing our brothers from the ty tyranny of socialism. Ah, oh, look at that. French nationals reclaim the metropole. Ah, oh, beautiful. La terra et la... Uh, ne me pas. Um, uh, our beautiful country, however, lies in ruins, devastated by the worst war in its history. And then, the return to the metropole after years of exiles caused chaos within our administration. Remaining these many issues would be no mean feat. Over a decade of exile, the French regime in Algiers long opposed the communards in Paris as triumph and reclaimed the mainland. With the fall of the commune, a new government has of reaction has begun to cement itself within the metropole, determined to bring an end to all that is cynicalist. However, the new France is still far from stable. Many believe that a radical transformation still awaits the wounded state. Regardless, the exiles are back and never again shall they leave. 
Building slots. Ah, uh, that'd be very good to do. What this bit goes up? Yeah, let's go into this one. Restore administration, because as much as I want to do that one, which would be very nice to do as well, but... The move from Algiers to Ile de France, which I never knew how to pronounce, has greatly impacted the efficiency of our administration, where bureaucrats have to forget 20 years of established practice. Meanwhile, this has been cruelly exploited by what the social re resistance remains, with civil disorder now all too common. We must work to reduce the impacts of the situation, investing in new bureaucratic training and officers, and reinforcing police forces. Social resistance rises. And so we maxed out those planes, and I want medium airframes are okay. Um, it is 1940. Do we not have CAS? Oh, we do have CAS there. there. Although we've set France free, it's quite clear that not everyone in the nation sees it in those terms. A large part of the population was sufficiently misguided in the war to go beyond simply defending the nation and actively support the socialist regime. Now, the socialists have been uh, on top of many of these men have gone underground, forming resistance cells and seeking to attack and undermine the legitimate government. Defeating the starts would be no easy task. Pretty normal. So is this still going up? Yeah, it is, so I'm not too worried about that. This one. Great election signs occupied by our people and our troops. We must decide what to do with it. Military occupation, of course. Nope. Terrorist scum. Dogumichi. Acad the Academy Francaise has awarded the French language prize to Paul Hazuma for his historical novel Dogumichi. Both in our court intrigues and Ebony, capital of the Dahomey Dah Kingdom. By the author's admission, however, the plot of the book is largely there to serve its historical and ethnographic qualities. Indeed, Hazume aims to accurately depict life before the European colonization and facilitate the understanding of the black mind by the colonizer, proving along the way that Dahomeans and Africans in general are not so different from civilized people that, and that they too have a long and rich history worth of being studied. Born into an aristocratic family in, 19, in 1890 in Porto Novo, Hazume is himself Dahomean. Educated in a Catholic mission, then moving to Senegal to further his studies, Hazume wrote in local newspapers, sharing a generally pro-French sentiment, but never shying away from the criticism of the excesses of the colonial administration. As Dahomey was acceded to Germany, he started teaching a career while writing articles published in both French and German territory, earning himself the respect of the used European colleagues in a job at the Museum of Man. Paul Hazume has never reached new heights by becoming the first African man to earn such a distinction. The decision, which could have proved controversial since it had been generally met with praise of, for much of the colonial society, but for varying reasons, where some evolu evolues see proof it was if one ever was needed of the intellectual equality of the black man some of the colonial governments see proof of the success of the civilizing mission in any case a fascinating book a certain legitimacy huh social resistance will moderate late decline that'd be good um rebel industry rushing this might be really good to do to do as well national recovery versus doing all this stuff over here final president worthy of de la Roc, which apparently i apologize i didn't get comments in the past episodes or the last episode but it's supposed to be pronounced Dilla Rock, and we do have some other comments to go through as well. Tragic death. Ooh. Oh, well then. Address devastation, and then the aftermath of the war. Oh, and the horrendous battles required at every step to free the nation, much of France now lies in ruins. The pre war social economies collapsed, and the countless millions not jo only jobs without any jobs to seek. With the former factories and farms have been torn to pieces, as such, we must urgently invest in a relief for the people. Oh my god. And begin rebuilding the country. With the turn of Upper Savoy. Switzerland's approach was an offer to return the upper region of the Upper Savoy or control after control in the region for nearly two decades. They have deemed our nation the rightful owners of the land. And according to the previous obligation of the stewardship, they have properly returned the region to us. They have honored their obligations. Oh. Beautiful. As I have to play this campaign. Jesus Christ. This looks amazing. I love this. And they're just fighting a bunch of Africans. And Ottomans, but whatever. Wait, wait, did I do this one already? Pretty sure I already did. Send in the army. What? Mmm. I didn't do that one. No, this is bugged. That's gonna keep firing, isn't it? Crap. The fate of the socialist bureaucrats. The communist art is, or required a vast network of administrators and bureaucrats as long as they did, and now that we vanquished it, now, uh, we, we have to settle on our policy towards these men who enable our foes to survive as long as they did. Well, many believe that it's time to take vengeance on these traitors and put them on all on trial. Some argue that the less ideologically committed could be given new jobs in their administration. Whereas their experience may prove vital. Let out the lesser offenders. Purge the lot. Purge them. So, we have a lot of resistance all over the place, which sucks for us. Because these are not quite cores, so... I'll put down a lot of resistance still. Especially in southern Italy. We're looking at... Oh my god. There we go. Take that. Not bad overall. No Rodizin. Having social resistance sucks a lot. Really start focusing on these shippies here. 
Uh, I've got some heavy batteries. Death of Pius. That's fine. We're not super concerned. So we'll read this one. Settler returnees. With a metro pole back in our hands, there are now millions of Frenchmen seeking to as they see it. Come on. These men and women only expect settlement and resumption of life as it was before the revolution, but also as the restoration of their old properties, of course. Fully meeting these demands would generate much resentment among the Frenchmen who never left the metropole. Whose loyalty we need to gain. Who are they fighting? Uh, people I care about? No. A sort of legitimacy, huh? There can no longer be any doubt that we alone are capable of governing France. Socialism is broken around the world, across the world, and the strength of the socialist resistance within France is rapidly declining. New propaganda about campaigns and investments in law and order will ensure that every citizen respects us as his nation's sole legitimate government. Uh, the trials of the communards. With well, the greater part of the communes leadership now safely in prison, we can arrange for them to stand trial for the crimes against France and its people. But the matter of sentencing these men will prove to be controversial, and the government will need to tread carefully into the coming weeks. But the Algerian bomber, Marcel Sardin, nicknamed the Algerian bomber, has claimed the French welterweight boxing title after a 12-round battle of pure will against his opponent in front of thousands of who came to see this new sensation in French boxing. A 22-year-old. He's not known defeat since he started boxing professionally. He's now on a 40-win streak. Something few have achieved, considering especially that Sardan has admitted in interviews that he hates hurting others and how much prefers football over boxing. Tenacious, quick, and with incredible precision. Some see him in his immense potential, despite his one real weakness. Fragile hands, earning him his other nickname, the man with clay hands. Born in a poor Pierre Noir's family of Spanish origins, speaking French, Arabic, and Spanish, having left school at 11, drifting from job to job until his father realized his true worth as a boxer, Marcel's success story has turned him into a popular icon. No matter the community, Arabs, immigrants, Pierre Noir's, exiles, the public sees him as a true self-made man, coming from nothing yet climbing ever higher through sheer effort and strength of character. His national title well earned, he is now looking into joining the European fray. The whole nation will follow with great interest his career from now on, cheering him on, perhaps even all the way to the world champion title. Alaise Marcel on Yiva. Rebuild France? Ooh. Oh, we do it one at a time. Oh, what is this? Uh, so rebuild civil industry in Paris. We'll use three civvies to get a free civvy when we're done. Well, we have the political power for it. A new Marseille. Ever since the beginning of our expansion in North Africa, the port of Marseille has been an industrial or an instrumental hub linking the metropole and the colonies. While well, many businesses and industries that fled during the Civil War began relocating back to the metropole, several, however, have decided to stay where they are. In order to serve their business, we must work towards expanding the port facilities of Marseille and, and place it back on the map as one of the largest shipping ports of Europe. Yes. Uh, Provence, Bordeaux, military industry in Bordeaux, Lyon. Lyon. The City of Lights was turned into a fortress by the communards during their retreat northward. As such, the city took a beating during the fighting to liberate the population. We must take up the mantle to rebuild the city and restore the lights to this once beautiful city. Yes, we'll do all that stuff. A couple comments include, uh, yes, uh, I love the Viva la Francosphere in Casa Redux. Someone says, I always pick the IEDC Economic Advisors for Less Consumer Goods, which I do as well, like I said in the last video. Someone says, can you do in Tino the Iberian Federation as Torquato Fernandez Miranda? I probably can. Oh, um, if I keep if I remind myself, I probably can. Yeah. So it's just resistance to clients, as it should. I'll stick Sicily too, because we could. But the forces having worked tirelessly, we will encounter uh, resistance movements of former communards. We are this last seeing results as these groups increasingly lose strength, drawing public ire for their violent actions and struggling to successfully challenge a government. But they remain strong in some areas, and it's vital that, this, that we stay vigilant. They'll be done before you know it. Nice. Honestly, how strong is uh? Excuse me, uh, about roughly some of my manpower, navy-wise. Let's really build up our air force, because we're going to need some some really freaking strong air force. Do we, have, do we have enough guns? Yeah, we have more than enough guns. Housing the homeless. The war to liberate France has tragically destroyed much of the much of the beautiful nation, and now all too many good citizens are without any work or even housing. The resolving these people's plight must be an urgent priority for our government, and as such, very proposals have been made for relief. The most popular proposal is that we build new camps in which to house and process those who have been made homeless, before putting them in rebuilt ho housing when it's possible. On the other hand, uh, some argue that we should make use of the abandoned trade union and government offices as temporary accommodations, cutting costs, but reducing the quality of life and uh, ease of administration. Build new camps for them. Put them up in abandoned social offices. Uh, build new camps. I, I'm, I personally like building camps. Camps? Putting some people in camps sounds like a good idea. Director of Fire. Got some of this stuff too. Ooh, we can do both. Yes. Resistance reprisals. During the war, the resistance which valiantly stayed on the homeland, or the metropole, to wait a return, came uh, uh, came to control swaths of the country, forming the only reliable local administration as socialists were killed or fled, or, and politicians had to stay in Algiers to be close to power. However, reports are now reaching Ile de France of heavy handed policies adopted by these triumphant resistance fighters, with frequent tribunals of local socialists, or sometimes simply those with whom resistance members have grudges. Furthermore, the reliability of these trials have been heavily questioned, and the executions that often follow are seen by some as mere lynchings. This matter is highly delicate, of course, for us due to the great uh, debt to the resistance, but also the potential embarrassment of the news that this becomes more widespread, so we should have to tread carefully. 
Rain in this before it causes trouble. Turn a blind eye. There are reasons that are just. Stand by them. Yeah. Because in here, we're 33 combo width, which is okay. So now we're going to go to 42. Uh, field hospitals would not be bad, but we don't really need those now. Um, at this point, we're going to like go to like. We're going to really start expanding, because I do want to take out these guys as well. Um, well, since we're here, at least get 18 combat width for Marines. Anything else? Anti air, maybe. It's not bad. Can I add anything else here? Any more Mountaineers, maybe? Yes. Grab that 20 combat width, which is okay. I know I'm spending up all of our army XP, but you know, you never know if you need some of these guys, too. Um. Get some of that too. No, we're out of our mix B2. Address the devastation. Uh, oh. The call of silence. What's this one next? The Grand Prix du Cinema Francais had uh, been awarded the call of silence. A drama by Leon Poirier, the movie retelling the life story of the blessed Charles de, de Foucault, has uh, found critical acclaim and a great commercial uh, success indeed. He has fascinated the French public for years now. Charles Eugene. Viscount de Vaucold would have seen much for his early life an unlikely candidate for the devotion now surrounding him. Born into an aristocratic family, he lived a dissolute life. Eventually become a cavalry officer. This experience spurred him to leave his old life behind. He decided to take the vows, attracted by the aesthetic life of poverty among the Turags with whom he formed deep bonds, learning the language, translating the scriptures, and preaching through examples, seen as a saintly man by natives, authorities in the church's hierarchy. A tragic end awaited him, caught in the conflict with the Ascent New Sea. He was martyred on the 1st of December, 1916. Desert Hermit, uh, saintly martyr, pioneer of the French influence in the most remote corners of the empire. Charles, Father Charles, became a national icon. His total benefit to God and ascetism, ascetism inspired many Catholics, leading some to think their positions, rethink their positions on native populations and Islam as a whole. His recent beatifications even led the Academy of Colonial Sciences to petition the papacy so that he may be paid a pension salient of colonization. The regime, however, hasn't waited for him to be officially recognized as such and prominently used him as a propaganda piece. Despite Defoucault's frequent criticism of colonial attitudes, Father, I surrender to you a saint for sure. Ah, good. Slowly we will get there, my friends. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, uh, 1200, huh? Do we have any naval bombers? And war naval bombers. Nothing better, huh? Dealing with the returnees. In the aftermath of the revolution, some two million Frenchmen fled Algeria from the emerging communist tyranny. Over the next decade and a half, they built new lives in North Africa with new homes, jobs, in the case of younger exiles, new families. Now that France has been liberated, though, these men and women expect to return to the metropole and resume their lives as they were before the revolution, including having their property restored to them. But these properties have been used by others for years now, and locals would loathe to give it up to those who they see as having conquered them. In light of this, many in the government propose that we allow access to return to their own homes and regain their own businesses, on the condition that they give up ownership in the properties they gained in North Africa to the state, which can then be invested in profits of these properties and reconciling and compensating those who stayed in the metropole. Nevertheless, there are many who believe that the returnees are entitled to their property unconditionally, while others would rather we establish local committees to restore property disputes more fairly. Restore the exile's rightful property in full. Restore as long as they give up their African properties. We'll establish local committees to settle the matter. What to do the communes police? As we restore order in the metropole, we badly need a police force to assist us, but professional policemen are in short supply, as many need to remain in the colonies to maintain order there, and many others were conscripted and wounded or killed in the war. Meanwhile, however, meanwhile, however there are thousands of policemen who did their jobs under the commune who would almost all be willing to work to resume their jobs or work for the government. Nevertheless, many higher lines argue that these men would have tainted themselves by serving the commune regime, and that we should not allow them any influence now. Purge them? Let them redeem themselves? Nope. Rebuild the industry. If the economy we were is to ever recover from the horrific damage done by the war, we must rebuild the hundreds of factories turned durable by bombs and shells. New government agencies and millions of franc francs of funds will ensure that ruined industrial complexes can be rebuilt using labor programs. We can put those impoverished by the war back on the track to prosperity. Now, effort national. The reconstruction of the nation and economy will require the dedication of every loyal Frenchman. Regardless of politics and former allegiances, a new government program dubbed an Effort National will ensure that every working man knows that the rebuilding of the nation and acceptance of the new government is the only rational choice for his own family and the community around him. Meanwhile, it is time for the state to further invest in the salvaging of industry and economic relief. National recovery. 
Although much work remains to be done, the worst of the post-war devastation is now behind us, with the French economy having a stabilized and jobs return to the country. Meanwhile, although some dissent and resistance lingers, the political scene has calmed down with the government insecure in its place, and broadly accepted, if not universally loved. The worst is behind us, and now France can face the future. We shall see. As we all continue expanding our industry. Oh, we're going to need some more military factories. 80% is okay. Uh, I mean, we want to build all this stuff up eventually as well. That'll be nice. Oh, uh, those are allies. Uh, build industry. More population, better consumer goods, factor, faster factor construction speed. Three more cities. What's not to love? Ah. Restore the city of Cain. The Metaphysique Oriental. After the defeat of Napoleon in the Third and the Franco Prussian War, there was an explosion of esoteric societies in France. The Zocultus Milieu produced various new religious and philosophical currents, claiming ancient lineages and hidden knowledge, supposedly handed down by the cabals of masons, magicians, and alchemists. From this milieu emerged the first academic studies of Oriental religions and metaphysical systems, however. Following the defeat, this nascent community of occultists and Orientalists have broken in two with violent embrace or rejection of the new socialist regime. René Guénon It's firmly in the camp of the anti syndicalists having followed the government in exile over an anti-materialist tract to publish The Crisis of the Modern World. In which he rejects the concept of progress in favor of Hindu cyclical time, however. He is equally highly controversial, even within the far right, arguing in favor of ultra monotism on the basis of the supremacy of the Brahmin of the uh, Krishtriya, and having recently converted to Sufi Islam and exited his Masonic Lodge. His most recent book, Oriental Metaphysics, is a detailed exploration of Oriental metaphysical systems, drawing links between Catholicism and Eastern religions as sharing a primordial tradition. He's been embraced by the certain pirates of the far right, who see systems as a way to escape uh, the liberal world view of their recent past in favor of a traditional system free of the evils of progress. Others, however, have rejected violently, seeing this as a resurrection of Gnosticism within the Christian vanguard, some wishing to it to be banned. The book has caused significant controversy and lively debate, particularly between Guénon and Catholic Neil Thomas, philosopher Jacques Martin. Martin, getting a surprising amount of success with even relatively uh, mainstream audiences. Calls for a ban of the book have risen from clergy and conservative Catholics, while others argue that it would be helpful in evangelization or control of the natives. Ban we don't need for Eastern wisdom. I love the publication, under the watchful eyes, of course. Uh, ban it. The rest of the city of Kim. The relentless bombing of the course of the war proved catastrophic for the city and the surrounding regions, of course. Ooh. What do I want to? A few buildings were spared. We must spare no effort in rebuilding Normandy. Pretty much. Renovate Champagne, as much as it did in the first Fell Creek. The city of Reims came under direct artillery fire, uh, and large portions of the city were destroyed during the battles that the communists fought during the retreat towards Paris. The strategy can be used to our advantage as we have the opportunity to redesign the city with better infrastructure to support the population who wish to return home. Inertia on local committees, although our decision to establish local committees, with the representation of both returning from exiles and local inhabitants, which can settle property disputes on a case by case basis, has been broadly accepted by both groups as the fairest way to resolve the matter. These committees have increasingly faced inertia as they struggle to reach judgments satisfactory to all parties. Many argue that this inertia is largely due to the fact that these committees have received little direction from Ile de France on how to resolve disputes or how to, who to favor. As such, we must now provide them with more extensive guidelines on how to settle such claims. Favor the locals. Locals, because right now we get we still get over one political power every day, and we're not really using that much political power anyway, so I'm okay with that. Uh, keep going at least two on all military factories because oh, hello. Well then, uh, well, better get rid of that then. Not bad to get either. Subs we could use, but still. Air stuff, yes, please. Air looking stands bugged. What's this? Vow the port of La, La Roche. The importance of the harbor of La Roche has fallen ever since our loss against the British back in 1763 in a guerra, guerra de conquista, conquista, which largely achieves the fate of the New World of colonial ambitions with the New World. New order in the world, we can once again turn our attention to this port or for transatlantic trade with the New World allies. Name the continuation of imported goods and materials flowing out of Canadian factories that help us return home. Sure. Whatever helps us here. Uh, the Civil War is still raging down there. I, I didn't realize that earlier, but whatever. Museum of Man. Did they open in Algiers a Museum of Man? A museum where reuniting collections related to man's evolution, man's biological unity and variety, and man's cultural and social diversity. Showcasing various objects such as prehistoric artifacts, numerous examples of both French and indigenous crafts and artistry, and photographs documenting the way of life of various peoples living in the French Empire. 
Much of his collections are recent acquisitions. Indeed, the government funded extensive ethnographic expeditions in our present and former colonial possessions in an effort to consolidate our hold on outlying territories. The 1931 Dakar Djibouti mission alone, for example, made up of linguists, ethnograph and ethnographers, naturalists, painters, photographers, and even musicologists, brought back more than 3,000 objects, 6,000 photographs, 1,600 meters of photographic film, and 1,500 pages of notes documenting invaluable information on a rapidly disappearing way of life. Though there's some been some criticism over the matter of acquisition of his collections, some radical newspapers are even going as far as far as making accusations of the racket. The opening ceremony of the museum was a success, attended by the mayors of Algiers, the minister of the colonies, and thousands of curious Al Algerois, Pied Noirs, and Indignés alike. It's not a matter of stealing if it's for science, right? Can I just kill all three factions here? What if I just wanted to go to Worlden by myself? Is that possible? It should be. Advanced Hill is nice. Well, I don't want to do this. I mean, we do have a lot of stuff here, but like, this super heavy is cool. Um, level 3 is not bad. Level 3, level three, everything would be bad. Fire control, eh, that's fine for uh, level 2. Um, I wanted to get better secondary batteries first, but whatever. Dr. Farmer 3. This is going to be expensive. Aircraft facility stuff, secondary batteries, anti air. That's actually not bad. Improved heavy hole, advanced heavy hole. Wait, are we allowed? Five here? Oh, that was only five, not ten. Whatever. F a national. Well, that's a case. So we should put one of those guys. Now we have one, two, three. Go to Dover. One, two, three. I'd like to have Dunkirk, but whatever. Portsmouth. Let's see what we can do about that. There you go. There you go, too. Slowly just trying to rebuild everything. Plenty of fighters, just in case. Panama's gone. Better some machine guns. Happy 1941, everybody. Probably one more episode after this, because we do want to kill the Germans as best we can, too. So... Mobilize, huh? All we do is get a 5% stability hit, but we keep going up by 0.3 every week, so I'm not super worried. Oh, Czech Republic. Polish Republic. Uh oh. Oh. The world's looking. Holy crap, that's messy. Oh, these guys are really losing. How are you losing so much back down here? Just invade from the south or something. I'm not going to get involved. And Russian Socialist Republic. Oh, they must have pieced out? Did they peace out with Germany? Yeah, they must have pieced out. Okay. So then these guys are just focus on the transmitter. Alright, interesting. What is this? Restore the city king, yeah. Oh, what's this? Restore the Loire Valley? Sure. What's this? Renovate Champagne. Oh. Wait, what do we need here? Ah, oh, it needs to be a core or whatever. That's fine. We'll get there. Advanced cruisers, nice. I like those. Advanced carriers, we might be able to get those as well. Just a little bit more time. The fire guns, level three, three. Fire control, zero. Fall of Lisbon, radar, three. Secondary batteries for now. Three. Every fire, three. Three or two, so that's all we have really for now. Level national, very good. Very legitimacy, yes. Still get a good amount of political power. Very nice. That's the right too. All right. Um, naval 
bombers. Post air support. Yeah. Well, let's save just in case. If we do win, I don't want to give any of Britain to them. Or at least get, keep some tiles here. Can we actually invade, maybe? Need more naval supremacy, but their navy should be pretty decent. Oh, we're going anyways. Okay. Hello. Decent turkey. Oh boy, they must have stacked themselves pretty hard here, huh? Go, Marines, go! Uh, what do we force the attack? Uh, do we have a superiority? Yeah, we do. Oh. oh, hello. Are they gonna really land? Oh, yeah, they are. Let them land. See what happens. The homie? They're attacking us as we attack them too. Uh, let's at least win here first, and then we'll win over here too. Pretty good. I love how we just reverse attacked each other like this. Very cool, very cool. Oh, hello. Oh. Um, good, 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 good. And we won. Oh boy. Oh, shnikes. Go planes, go bomb them all. Oh, look at that. Not bad. Anything here of worth? Yes. There's iron sides. is good. Safety first. Yes. Big guns. Crisis effects. Uh, I'll go Crisis Magician. Spread out, come on, let's land, 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 land. Muscat is gone. Oh, now we get that. God dang it, whatever. Uh, so 41, get some more construction speed. What else we got here? We have stuff. Yes, good efficiency is good. Nice, not bad. Of course, I did take a lot of the ships from the Social Republic of Italy just so we have a bigger navy. As I can, as we can all imagine, we probably don't have a big old navy as National France, but whatever. Six level five, huh? Oh, that was the United American Union State. Goodbye, American Union State. Goodbye. All right, fuel. That's not good too. Wow. There's a lot of things here. Planes. Plus air support. Um, there we go. Oh boy. Hey, seeing some stores. That's nice. Seeing a lot of destroyers, that's nice. Seeing even more destroyers and screens, that's nice. 16, not bad. 18! Maybe we lost 18 planes. It's sunk 17 of them, though, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Well, hello. Even more of our guys involved. They have a lot of planes, though, but they're overstacked. They have a battle cruiser, huh? Alright. Nice. Oh, they're throwing more guys in. IEDC investments. Let's go to Dockyard this time. Ah, oh, Marine. Nice. Uh, well, I guess we all go to the That's fine. Ooh, don't lose a sub. Subbies. Nice. It's fine. Just sort of legitimacy as well. Draw the communards. Okay, guys, like, we really need you to take Plymouth, like, bro. You do not want to get in circle, trust me. Oh, well. Ball of London. We don't really want to destroy. Wow, how big is our military? We've lost seventy-six thousand. We killed off two hundred thirty thousand. It's not bad. Wow, lots of battleship too, huh? Nice, pretty good. Charlie, uh, Commander Officer Corps. 
Well, there's several months I've been passing the social surrender. The greater part of the officer corps has now been tracked down and arrested, and now is awaiting trial. In such order, extraordinary circumstances, it's only to be expected that the state advises the judiciary on how to try these individuals, and thus many believe that they should be tried for treason and mass. However, others argue that those officers who are less overtly committed to the socialist revolution or less brutal should simply be consigned to hard labor, and in a few cases allowed to contribute their military knowledge to our own army. Tried a lot for reason, treason. Yeah, why well, would give them any sympathy? If we want the Isles, we want all the Isles. Wow, look at that naval stuff. Holy crap. Well, so global presence. Uh, that's okay. Refit, speed, research speed, design cost. I like this one. Get back in the battle as fast as you can. Chance to score critical hits. Chance. Retreat chance. to Defeat a hit chance. Positioning. Hit him harder if he can, I guess. Where the heck are they going? Like these guys. Nice. Keep going down with this. More than enough. Attack's good. the Union Administrators. Now the Commons fall the leadership of the traitorous trade unions that were guilty for the revolution are bones and round up in his iron hands, as such. The time for the trials fast broach him. Some believe that lower ranking officials who are, who are just often trying to make careers in the system around him could be let off as long as they use their industrial knowledge and administrative skills for benefit, however. The many who oppose such a consil conciliatory approach would like to see everyone given hard labor at the very least. There are also those, um, of course, some hardliners, but have arranged military tribunals with inevitable verdicts of treason for anyone who can. Military tribunals, my friends. It is what it is. They chose their lot in life, and we're choosing a decision to help them reinforce it. Bros, come on. Oh. Come on, what the heck? Do we, or do we not have air superiority here? We do not, what the heck? Are you really gonna let our division die because of this stupid stuff? You sh don't need anything else to capitulate, this is so stupid. You really don't need anything else here to capitulate them. I promise you, you do not. This is incredibly stupid. Just go in for the love of God. Just murder them all. The social politicians now. Bivet, Diviat, and some all these guys. All these vile names and so many others have stained our national consciousness for all too long and there's tyranny attempted to destroy all that is beautiful about the French nation. Or about the French nation, really. Uh, let's go back up here, too. You guys hold. Just murder them all. Now, however, the leadership of the commune and its countless lackeys are almost all under custody and have let, at last amassed the ca political capital to try them uh, for the crimes. While it's inevitable that most of the high ranking will be ex executed for treason, the ministers and crewings are a matter of contention. Some of the, of the belief that a life of hard labor will be to preserve them as living memorials of treason while making them pay for years, while others argue that heavily publicized but fair trials make them the best way to expose the horrors they committed, of course. The many want them publicly executed as soon as possible. Hard labor? Public hangings. There we go. God dang it. I'm not giving them jack squat. I'm taking all this for myself. And I'll take as much of their navies as we can, too. Hours. Oh boy. Ah, Canada made it back. Nice. All right, so we lost a lot of ships. Oh my god. Oh, well, 340. Holy crap! 349? Jesus. Wow. 
Wow. Oh, so you're supposed to switch you in two. Switch you into another two. National recovery. Um, I think I was before. We can face future now. Um, carrier fighters and naval bombers. I guess at this point, yeah. With so much naval XP, I guess we might as well, right? A lot of torpedoes, anti-sub stuff. There we go. Jesus Christ! What the heck? Guys, go over there. It's fine. Um, Greater Britain. We can control of London, therefore the heart of England. We must decide to do the country. Eh, I'll occupy it. Command S. Return Canadian lands. Uh, now nah, we're good. Things happen. You know, we all know things happen. Uh, so this is on his last legs. A continued effort against the socialist terrorists are paying off more and more. The local branches of communist and resistance groups have been, been weeded out. And our forces increasingly gathered more intelligence over those that remain. As such, the remaining resistance is rapidly fading away. An optimist predict an impending victory of the, the terrorists. Excellent news. Good, good, good. That'll be very quick to invade. And then, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I go here too. That's fine. So we need some planes, huh? Proof carrier holds dreadnoughts. I love dreadnoughts, but still, always for other reasons. Proof carrier. Oh, two hundred three. So oh god. Radio navigation. Radio navigation. Air to air one bomb sites. Uh, let's go with fighters. A little less agility, but more way more air defense. There you go. And then. Fighters, naval bombers, special modules, extra fuel tanks, floats. There's naval targeting. That's fine. Electronics, defense turrets, heavy MG defense. There's agility a little bit. Heavy MG defense turret times two. Well, we could try it. Because, oh. god dang, that exploded our navy to a massive size. Ooh, do we have four subs here? Probably not what we want here. Not saying these subs are any good, because they're probably honestly not, but whatever. What do we have down here? What about Ossetan? Fate of Wales have been brought under control as our enemies occupy the region. We must have what to do with it. Yeah, national recovery. Look east. The greatest diplomatic question now facing us is that of Germany, which of the perfidious box continuing to occupy Austria's terrain, besides many former French colonies still in the moment of weakness. As a central way to determine our policy towards the Reich, as we seek to carve out our place among the great powers. Oh. Ah, there goes the Republic of South Africa taking other people out. Consolidate our alliance. With other various allies around the world, we would have achieved nothing as such. We must repay their sacrifices with favorable trade terms and military aid, thus guaranteeing that their loyalty to us continues, and we go arm in arm into the new era. Ooh. Huh, oh, interesting. Or read the military. In the immediate aftermath of the liberation, the French military went into some decline as funds and were redirected to reconstruction. And many soldiers were lost in the course of the war now. Now France is back on its feet, however. We can again increase military funding, beginning with investments in tactical advancement and expansion of the officer corps. This ends. What are the status of Alta Lorraine? Oh, look at that. Uh, there are so many small diplomatic questions and other territorial disputes that we should seek to resolve as we serve our place on the world stage. Meanwhile, we can begin to rebuild our colonial empire by demanding that breakaway states submit to our protection and review the economy. 
With the worst of the post-war chaos behind us, we can now divert attention, or more funding towards the French economy, our industry, and instead of new government bodies tasked with revitalizing France's economy in order to get the long-term aftermath of the war and the build-up of this economic soft power. Oh, that's not bad. Read the military, look east. The thaw, the perennial enemy. Return French territories. Seek some improved relations. Well. Finally, our security forces and troops have mopped up the overwhelming part of the social resistance against our legitimate government. With the political scene more broadly stabilizing, this is a major success for the government and one which we'll be sure to exploit in our propaganda. Brilliant! Ah, Nice and Savoy. Rebellion in Burgundy. The border region saw large scale fighting as the Germans and the Communards clashed in the Second Belt Creek. Mass troop movements has damaged our infrastructure in the region and has required the attention of a government to rebuild. Uh, I'll just go bye bye. It's fine, whatever. Two Sicilies getting kind of thick, but they don't even own Sicily. Go figure. But then we must begin doing all this other stuff. That's not political power. Fate of coming our soldiers. Advisors. Economy? Yes, please. La Croix de Feu Triomphant. Today, New Dawn rises over France. La Croix de Feu. Once a minor militia, militia with a few thousand members, now sort of control over the French government. Seen as a rather moderate far-right movement, its emphasis on Catholicism, corporatism, and social harmony and more recently. Anti-Semitism has made it more easy to stomach than other more severe far-right parties like the AF, now in charge of France. And with the theater closing in on its gray, the CDF must act fast if they are to leave this lasting legacy. Not bad. Plenty of planes too? Never enough planes, what a lie. New England could have won the US, oh boy. Review the gun. The Alps. Beautiful. The Immaculate Heart. Today, the head of the state of the Papal States is landed in Paris to oversee the most ambitious ceremony. As no secret, the CDF is a primarily, and some would say, zealously Catholic organization. As a Catholic organization, overseeing a nation full of non Catholics and what is to come may be seen by some as tasteless, out of touch, or even offensive, yet by consecration of all France, both the metropole and the former French, the former North African base. In the Immaculate Heart of Mary, was not only we pledge ourselves against Catholics to spread Jesus' good word across the world, but as we open the door, the rest of France to return to his light. As again popular, those of little faith or no faith at all have turned more and more to the Catholic Church, swelling the numbers of the Catholics and granting us God in a sense favor in our holy, holy mission. Uh, there goes a Muscat. Bye, Muscat. Mass membership program. The CDF, for all its popularity, is rather small, with just a few thousand actual members. This has left a regime particularly vulnerable to sabotage, as we lack the cadres. Although supporters enjoyed by most of the parties, so to combat this, we shall begin a massive recruitment drive to draw all those who want France free into our ranks. All across the nation, posters, radio ads, and pamphlets encouraging people to join the CDF are being put up, handed out, or listened to. Already, we've noticed recruitment going up by at least 90% compared to last year. De La Roc is sure that the numbers will only grow. Behead the Red Snake. Uh, while we have reclaimed the Metropole, syndicalists still harass our forces across the nation. If we are to secure ourselves in our homes once again, we must expunge this red filth at this root. The army will begin to aggressively chase uh, the syndicalists Franck Terror back to the holes and burn them out. It will be a long process, if not an excruciating one, but it must be done if stability is to last. De La Roque is fell ill, oh no. Today, a great tragedy has befallen. The French nation is a president who fallen ill. He was feeling chest pains and complained to the secretary above for a collapsing in his chair. His guards rushed to support him and transported him to a nearby clinic, uh, where his doctors were called. The doctor, arriving within 15 minutes of the call, then worked on the colonel till late in the night afterwards. In the press, comments of the doctor assuaged fears that the colonel's dying and that the situation destabilized with the cause being a heart attack due to exhaustion and stress. Experts have said that the president will be back on his feet within five days and asked the public to not spread panic and discord among our nation at this crucial moment in time. The president has been moved to a safe location under 24 7 uh, surveillance of the finest soldiers and the best French doctors available anywhere in the empire. Let us hope De La Roque gets better. Well, after we while we read about the other pokes, I don't know if we will. Uh, we'll see. 900 fighters are not enough. Mm. Train, 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 train. Build more refineries. As we're trying to build more divisions too. We're looking to edit these divisions as well. 
Look at those ball. Immaculate Heart, oh boy. We don't want De La Roque to die. No. Catholic populist ethos. To many, Catholicism and populism are two sides of the coin. Populism usually entails grand forms, earth quaking changes, and an upending of the status quo. While the Catholic Church usually wants none of that, however, De La Roque is one of a rare breed. He's a Catholic populist. He sees God's love of humanity and interprets it as his want for us to strive to better ourselves in our situation. Even if that means to do so, we must go against the Church in some other ways. Okay, yeah. Towards social harmony. Whites, blacks, Arab, Jews, Christians of all kinds, and Muslims call France home. Such diversity in a lesser nation would be a pressure cooker to set to explode, but however, France, De La Roque's France, is not a pressure cooker. It's a special nation, ordained by God to further his vision. To do so, however, ethnic and religious tensions cannot be abided by. That's why De La Roque has begun to smooth out these potential con uh, conflict points. Some have criticized this move as he has routinely done so in favor of Christians when possible, and whites in general, but their voices are in the minority. The people want peace, and the CDF has given it to them. Corle de Maculette. Today at Notre Dame, there was a grand ceremony to mark France's return to the values of old by overcoming the false republic that the communists have propped up by deceiving our ignorant masses. But those of those godless militants were no match for their soldiers who fought for God and his people, with no regard for their own lives. Promising you heaven for the dead and French mainland for the survivors, these wars of faith defeated more and tore down the false gods of cynicalism that the communists had believed in. Our beloved leader was not present at this situation not improved, and doctors were not contacting ministers who asked for the help in locating any old medical records that may be left to pinpoint the cause of his prolonged illness regardless the message he had written for the people of france was read on the radio and in the halls of notre dame to great and resounding applause from the listeners throughout our public god watches our progress de la roque's condition worsens as of the day de la roque's condition has worsened a lot and the colonel is unable to govern his beloved country there's now a clear panic among the ministers that the situation was not to be expected until later when our nation would have been stabilized after the liberation as such there have been strange reports of politicians and people power meeting secretly and making deals meanwhile Francois Coty, Charles Vallin, and Francois Mitterrand have announced their candidacy for the presidency, declaring that De La Roque is now a thing of the past, and that France must look forward while getting stuck in the past. France now needs a captain, but who will, uh, who will it choose to carry on De La Roque's legacy? The rivalries reveal themselves already. As we're going to do this one, and we're trying to do towards social harmony, but the final president worthy of De La Roque. Uh, president Francois de la Roque is dead. He had apparently been sickly for a long time, but kept it hidden from us. This, that is stress of the presidency exacerbated his condition, now he's gone. Now, the leaderless CDF is vulnerable. Resistance to our rules began to crop up like weeds. We must find a strong leader if we're to survive the coming storm. They may have been thrown their hat in the ring to take over the party. There's a nationalist, Francois Mitterrand, the populist, Charles Villain, and the propagandist, Char Francois Coty. Each one has wildly different views for how France should proceed, and only one can see the dream come true. And here we go. Ireland, you must be ours. I'm not going to call any of our allies in. Hopefully we can naval invade just fine, and hopefully we will not struggle too much trying to invade Dublin. But we're going to struggle probably no matter what. Um, Tom Barry's leading the defense, huh? Well, hopefully we can break his defense. Oh, okay, we landed. Trying to land down in Cork. Dublin, of course. We're doing okay up here, too. Of course, we will be forced to attack. We're okay. Uh, we blew up a couple convoys, destroyers, and whatnot. Um, L Limerick? We're trying to get a Limerick. 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 Thank you very much. La Mort du Colonel. Oh, crap. Our nation of friends. Well, I'll forever remember the day that our president and guide, De La Roque, breathed his last and died peacefully among family and friends. The death of De La Roque has stirred the hearts of millions of French. Ordinary people regarded the colonel as a statesman of the world who gave the confidence and respectability to France, a man who ensured that other statesmen listened to him like when he spoke. Rue de Paris announced his death and telegrams were sent to every corner of the empire, several major French citizens, or cities, witnessed protests both in favor of and against his death. Some people celebrated it while others held rallies and prayed for him. Apparently, a poet said, The sky has fallen upon us and his greatness will never again be realized by the French nation. It is as if the colonel was a star that one could only try to emulate but never become. However, on the darker side of the empire, there has been unrest as there was no valid successor for the colonel leading some to believe a civil war is imminent if a solution isn't reached within time. A tragedy for the nation. Crap. Well, that certainly ain't very good. Go and just kill them all. Ah. Uh. Comité Temporary Contemporaire de Gouvernance Francois. Well, there's no Jean here, though. He's a dude. Death of Francois de la Roque. The glory and the million celebrations of the liberation of the Metropole by the Croat few came to an abrupt end today as the death of President uh, Francois de la Roque was announced today. Or today, already, the leader of the re regime paid tribute to him and held a great ceremony in honor of him. Out of the question of the succession of the colonel arises, a temporary council has been formed because the problem of the vacant presidency will have to be solved sooner or later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These guys are already in part of the Entente, so I'm not so worried about that. 
So that front will be fine. We've got to focus on this front too, because the Reich's batch is looking pretty thick. We need fronts down here, fronts over there. Fronts pretty much all over the place. Yeah, we did all right. Three and four more ships. Not bad. Um, yeah, you guys can go right there. Train if you need to. Uh, go home and repair. Mm, take it off. Go and repair too. So the Isles are ours. Not bad so far. Oh, hello. Our Isles are down there too, trying to fight. Whatever. De La De Roque's funeral. Around Paris, the bells chimed to commemorate the bureau of De La Roque, our beloved leader, despite his contradictory character. He was an admirable figure. It was not uncommon for him to have arrogance because he was intellectually sharp and came from an illustrious family. He was certainly not a coward, even if he were, were a bully. Despite the horrors of the last few months, his bearing demeanor were noble. Negative circumstances would not, uh, Break his spirit, or nor would he budge or beg for anything. In spite of the fall of the mainland of the godless syndicalists, the colonel never gave a pope and kept fighting for the French people, never kowtowing to the traitors. Our soldiers claimed the mainland under his leadership, and the empire was united and free of the leftist regime. Repose in pay. Or how we pronounce it, because next episode I do want to go to war with the Germans. Happy 1942, everybody. Happy 42. Uh, armor plates, fuel tanks, cannons, defense cannons, why not? Uh, towards social, social harmony. Ten days. I love smoking. Nope. Don't even bother me with that. That asking that. Not bad. You can use more planes and whatnot. But a lot more air bases too. But we need more fuel. We already know we're gonna need more fuel. Because we're already out of fuel. And we need more divisions too, so. There you go. More. Because we need another army. Uh, first, uh, okay, Doc. Hunzinger. Hunzinger. The Nuovo President. Have him. Uh, Barry the Colonel, of course. The nation must now show, uh, uh our chooses to, uh, where the success of his legacy to continue the work he started. Our first choice is Charles Vellin, a career politician who advocates moderation in the reforms proposed by De La Roque. It prefers to solely reform France and favors an open and free democracy with three restrictions. Francois Mitterrand, on the other hand, as a radical and advocates for a radical people in the political system to change the face of the French nation overnight. Uh, a third and more interesting choice would be Francois Cote, a Bonapartist who prefers a Republican model instead of a monarchist one. He's a perfume dealer whose name is known throughout Europe as a man of wealth and grandeur. Now the council is convened for the first time after the tragedy of the previous month. As we'll choose a successor from these two choices. The French people await their decision. We'll continue the work of the colonel, the, the, the new De La Roque. Cote need order and grandeur just like under Bonaparte, the modern Bonaparte. Francois Mitterrand, we must have a young and energetic face for the, for the Republic. More attack and defense, that's cool. Francois Mitterrand, yeah, I think I remember reading about him. He's a real guy, dude. Active leadership, fraternal spear, that's not bad. More weekly manpower. Mystique of the front. Christian vitality. Ooh. Le France, la France of Francois. Uh, foster ultra nationalist milieu. Demand dedication, interesting. A clean and strong France. I like that a lot, too. Or Charles Vellin. Which I know I'm saying that wrong. Social Catholic politics. Commit to mass politics. Corporatism for the working man. Cement social Christianity. Promote scouting. Hurts consumer goods, though. Necessity of reform. Maintain illegalist power. Peel back repression. National Charter of Labor. A truly social party. Presidential state. That's not bad. We could map our bus 200. Uh, towards populist democracy. Huh. Interesting. More, way more weekly stability. And Francois Coty. Confront Masonic influences. Subordinate the party. A loyalist uh, party, huh? Social obligations of the elite. Republican national corporatism. Dominate the media. Modern Bonapartism. Interesting. Weekly manpower plus 200. Weekly army experience gain. Not bad, too. Corsican favoritism. Huh. Projects national. A pro pro projects? Projects national. National. Order, authority, hierarchy. You know what? I'm gonna leave this up to you. Which way should we go? Valin, Coti, or Mitterrand? Let me know in the comments below. Um, this stuff is all not about research lab. New trade deals? We're gonna achieve economic success with those strong trading partners, and finding such trading partners will go a long way in buying, buying our status on the world stage. The new government committee will seek to draw up trade deals with the nations around the world and will negotiate with them for mutually beneficial arrangements and revive French cities. 
urban areas and urban industry are absolutely essential to our economic success and were extremely hard by the war. A new round of investments aimed at restoring businesses and jobs to cities and rebuilding the many buildings which are so damaged will ensure that French cities become uh, the centers of culture and success that they should be. But let me know in the comments below who should we go with. But if you enjoyed the video though, leave a fat like, subscribe if you are new, check out my Discord link in the description below and I'll see you in the tomorrow in the next episode in which we will figure out who's going to lead us and probably march all the way to Berlin. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.